Will you like my sink vanity? Well, thanks. I made it. So if you missed my last video, I highly encourage you to go back and watch that one. It was my small bathroom makeover. And in that makeover, I replaced my sink vanity with one I had created from a thrifted cabinet. And I promise to go into detail in my next video on exactly how I did that. So this cabinet was one that I bought on Facebook Marketplace for only $60. And not only was it absolutely gorgeous and really went with my vision for what I wanted in this bathroom, but it was also the exact right dimensions. If this was one inch wider or deeper, my door would have hit it and it wouldn't have been able to open and close. So this really just felt like the perfect cabinet for what I needed in a variety of ways. And thanks to everyone who weighed in on the last video, I went with the clear vessel sink because I think it highlighted the painting on the cabinet um, just more than that larger white sink could have done. So this was the one that I went with. Okay, so one hole will be drilled in the cabinet right here for where the sink drain will go. A second hole will be drilled in the cabinet right underneath this beautiful faucet that I picked out. The only other holes that will need to go into the cabinet will be inside in the back wall there will be a couple of holes drilled for oh let me focus that a little bit more for the hot and cold water attachment and for the drain so there will still be a lot of space for storage um, and very you know minimally invasive surgery will be performed on this beautiful cabinet so we'll see how this goes Hopefully I can pull it off, my first major DIY. Ta -da! <laughs> and here's a look underneath the old sink vanity. You can see it's a pretty simple hookup of just the sink drain going into the wall, up through the top of the basin, and then the hot and cold water hookup. The first step with any thrift flip has got to be to clean your item. So this was owned by someone else previously and has who knows how many years of dirt and grime built up over it. And a lot of that I could really see in all of the you know, detail crevices and carvings on this cabinet. You can see the immediate difference it makes just to wipe this down with some furniture polish. And I gave it a very thorough cleaning. I went into all of these little nooks, crannies and grooves with q-tips to make sure that I could just get it as glistening as possible and it was tedious but it was pretty rewarding to see how nice the cabinet looked after it was thoroughly wiped down. After cleaning the cabinet, the next most important step was going to be waterproofing. I needed to make sure that this cabinet was really thoroughly protected from any potential water damage given what its purpose was going to be as a sink vanity. So I chose a polyurethane that was used for bar tops and for outdoor chairs. So this one was going to be pretty heavy duty and I gave it multiple coats. I decided to do one coat early on and then more coats after I had drilled the holes in this cabinet. So this was just my initial first coat of the polyurethane, letting it dry thoroughly before um, doing any more work on the cabinet. One thing I knew I was going to need to do was replace the knobs on the cabinet. There was one missing and one still intact. And even though I really liked the way it looked, I liked this kind of pendant um, door pull, I couldn't find one that matched it closely enough to replace the single missing one. So I decided to take off this older pull and I saved it. Maybe I'll use it for a future DIY down the line. And I ordered some new ones to go on this cabinet front. To try and be cohesive with the beautiful Japanese print style paintings, I went with this ginkgo leaf pull um, in gold, which I think looks really, really nice with the cabinet and gives it just a little bit of a modern feel. In order to make the vanity look truly custom and intentional in this bathroom, I wanted it to fit as closely to the wall as possible. So using a multi-tool, we took away a little bit more of the baseboard and tried to make it fit around the contouring of the bottom of the cabinet. Um, and I filled in any gaps 
after installing it with some caulk and it looks pretty seamless and nice. So using this multi-tool was just a nice extra step to get it to fit closer to the wall. Next, I took some large sheets of sketch pad paper and taped them to the wall where the cabinet was going to go. I then just took a pair of scissors and cut around those pipes to figure out exactly where I was going to drill the holes in the back of the cabinet. One thing to keep in mind is I need to flip the sketch pad paper um, to be you know, the mirror image side on the cabinet. Otherwise, the holes would have ended up too far to the right. So that's just one thing to keep in mind if you're using this sort of stencil method. Take it off of the wall and then flip it onto the back of the cabinet like you see here. I think drilling the holes in the cabinet was probably the most entertaining part of this DIY project. Um, it was just fun to see the perfect circles emerge with the spade drill attachments. Um, so you can see one being drilled in the back of the cabinet there, and then there was a shelf within the cabinet that I needed to drill another hole through. This was for the sink drain to connect to the wall, so this shelf got in the way. Um, so what I'm doing here is drilling with one of those spade attachments, and I will say this requires just a little bit of elbow grease and pressure, but also it requires a well-charged drill battery. So my drill kept getting, or the drill bit rather, kept getting stuck in the hole as I was going, and that was because my battery wasn't fully charged. So that was just one thing that I learned in the process of this DIY was to make sure that I was using full power to make my work a little bit easier. Also, don't follow my example here. If you have long hair, always tie it back if you're working with power tools, especially a drill. That was not my smartest move. <laughs> The moment of truth moving this cabinet into the space and hoping that it fit around the pipes was a little bit nerve wracking, but it fit absolutely perfectly. We had to just be really careful as we were going so as not to jostle the pipes um, any more than necessary, but the holes fit really snug and perfect around those pipes and we just gently slid it back, taking our time and checking on the inside to make sure that we weren't um, stressing the pipes at any point. I was so excited to see the cabinet within the bathroom at this point and just feeling reassured that it was absolutely going to bring my vision to life. But the next step was to actually install the faucet and the sink. So we just made sure that we were working with the right spade attachments that were going to be the correct size for the pipes um, and the sink opening. You wanna make sure that exactly the right size. So just measure, um, if you're trying a DIY like this, make sure you measure twice and drill once. Um, so cutting a couple more holes in the top of the cabinet was a little bit more nerve wracking once again than the ones that went in the back because these ones were a little bit more visible. Um, so the pressure was just a little bit higher, but we just went slow, took our time, kept measuring, and the holes were pretty easy to drill into the top of the cabinet. So one goes in the direct center for the sink basin, and then I just played around with the faucet deciding exactly where I wanted it to go in relation to that sink. Now my dad and I installed the piping together. We hooked it up to both the sink and the faucet and neither of us had ever attempted anything like this before, but it was really straightforward and simple. Just connecting the hot water pipe to the hot water hookup and the cold water pipe to the cold water hookup and then the sink drain 
to the drain pipe. Um, just tightening the joints and making sure that there were no leaks was really all there was to it. And then I angled the faucet so that it created a sort of whirlpool effect around the drain to minimize any splashing, which you can sometimes get with a vessel sink like this. So really the hooking up of the pipes and testing it out for leaks was one of the easiest parts of the DIY and definitely one of the most rewarding parts to see it actually working, um, to see that you had taken this just simple cabinet and turned it into a functional sink. So before I could call the project finished, I wanted to do one last coat of polyurethane now that I had drilled some holes and exposed some openings. And I wanted to sand the surface down with a really fine grit sandpaper first and wipe away any dust and debris with a tack cloth, which I just got from the hardware store. This would ensure that my final coat of polyurethane adhered really well to a clean and freshly sanded surface. So I did one last coat of this polyurethane and so far it's been holding up beautifully. The water just beads up on the surface and runs right off if there are any spills. And inside of the cabinet, there have been no leaks so far. So fingers crossed that that stays true. And the final step of any DIY is staging it to perfection. So adding my little bits of decor and storage within, it was so nice to actually have storage in this bathroom. I know I said that a lot in my last video, but going from a sink vanity that had very little space within it to one that had more space than I even knew what to do with was a treat. And it was really awesome to see how well this cabinet turned into a sink. Using it every day is such a privilege. I honestly really enjoy it. It's just cool to see hard work pay off and a vision come to life. So if you ever wanna to try to turn a cabinet into a sink vanity, I can tell you that if I can do it, someone who had no plumbing experience and honestly very little DIY experience, if I could find success with a project like this, then you definitely can. And as always, as you enjoy these close-up detail shots of my beautiful thrifted cabinet turned vanity, thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you missed the last video, you can head back and check that one out for the full process of installing the beadboard, changing the paint color, and adding all of this decor. But thanks for being here to see another one of my projects, and I'm looking forward to bringing you another one very soon.